Her plump, clammy feet felt glued to the cool forest floor of Flat Rock State Park in Columbus, Georgia. The dark thoughts consume her as she inhales. She lets out her miasma of malevolent desires. Hate-filled words corroded with vanity and selfishness. Tears roll down her cheeks. Her bitterness grows. The forest absorbs her venom, its toxicity exceeding exhaling a warning through its gentle rustling. A voice whispers her name. The breeze touching her bare skin brings her attention to her vulnerability. Yet she remains stubborn. A fool on her journey, amidst a crescendoing wind, the ancestors speak, countless voices forming a cacophony to desist. Ghostly images materialize around her. She falls deaf to their fervent plea to prevent her decline into a sinister world. They tug at her, begging her to stop. She observes her wristwatch. The digital face glows, the sole decoration on her melon-in-drenched skin. It's time. I am. We know who you are. Who are you? We are the ones you have called for. Grant me my wish. Undeterred at thinking further about her decision or the consequences, she focuses on her twisted goal. I got this. Of course. Come into me and give me your power. My soul now belongs to you, my lord. Sage's Vision February 8, 2024, Sage's eyes flew open, his breath coming in quick gasps as he was jolted awake from a harrowing nightmare. Visions of a mysterious woman, her figure lost amidst the dense foliage of a haunting forest, flickered in his mind's eye. The powerful images overwhelmed him and he needed the help of a wise medicine man to understand his confusing dreams. He raises himself in bed and gazes around. The time was six in the morning. The elders would be available to help him. As he prepared for the day, Sage gathered his long, obsidian hair into a ponytail, ensuring it wouldn't distract him. He emerged from his dwelling, a charming cottage nestled within a secret cave system stretching from North Florida to South Alabama. A hidden tribe had made their home there for countless generations. With his feet snug in his moccasins, he set off towards the Elder's Lodge. The soft murmurs of prayers and the calming aura of meditation awaited him in the early morning. Upon entering the Lodge, he began his search for an elder who would speak with him. Sage, Kong son, tell me what is on your mind. Grandfather Elijah. What's wrong? You just got back from the Amazon. Did something happen? No, the trip was great. I had a dream, and it was very upsetting. Elijah's weathered fingers lifted his handcrafted pipe its smooth surface adorned with exquisite handmade glass and gold beads. Swung from a leather strap, an eagle's feather danced with an ethereal grace, kissed by an unseen breeze. The old man reached for tobacco, releasing a faint scent of earth and dried leaves into the air. Sage had picked a dry twig and dipped it into the crackling fire, igniting a flame that flickered and danced. A smile graced Elijah's face as he inhaled, feeling the warmth and richness of the tobacco fill his lungs, its ember glowing with a perfect radiance. Dream. A vision. A woman has sold her soul to darkness for power. Why did I dream that? How does it concern me? You will be sent on a mission. The company is growing very well. It's time that you are there in person. Certain snakes have found their way into Sagely. Allow the Creator to lead you and keep in mind how the enemy moves. How can I prepare? Prepare to meet your future. She is strong, wise, but needs her mate. 
Two are always better than one. What does she look like? You will know. Is she the one? In the forest? Go your way, son, and stay close to the creator. Sage nodded and rose to his feet. He thanked the elder and left the lodge to return home. As the aroma of cut fruit wafts through the air, Sage's mother Jewel sets down a rustic wooden bowl before him. It's about time you embraced a new chapter, meet someone, and settle down. You've been out there for five long years. Even Dakota found someone. Rachel, cut him some slack. He's out there doing something extraordinary for all of us. Dakota is happy now, and they're both making remarkable contributions to the tribe. After this last mission, I promise to shift my focus to finding a worthy companion. We're proud of you, son. We trust your judgment. You'll know when you find her. I will, father. Paulina Moore sat in the office of Pritchard Carson, her boss and founder of Carson Pharmaceuticals. While his corporation was the top performing in its field in America and abroad, Paulina's role was to stop any future threats to the company's success. The new threat to the Carson Pharmaceuticals was a fast-growing company called Sage Leaf, an all-natural herbal supplement company from Columbus, Georgia. The owner is going public because of new business laws this year. The company has a face. Is he cute? There is no picture. His name is Sage Eagle Sklaw. Interesting. From Dauphin, Alabama. Pritchard closes the file and hands it to Paulina. They placed a job opening for a personal assistant. We have sent over your resume. Our mall has already locked in the position for you. City of Columbus information. Your home, vehicle and all the legal documents you will need. You leave today. He'll arrive soon, and I want you to be the first beautiful face he sees. Sage. Interesting name. Sounds like some old Native American fairy tale. Reconor. Destroy. I'm sending you for a reason. Okay, sir. She stood, grabbing her purse. Her red bottom shoes clicked against the marble floor as she made her way to the office door. Miss Moore, he may be a little older than you. Don't let age hinder us. I will keep you posted. She left the office. Elderly? Paulina strips past the receptionist's desk. He's the same age as me. 